On today's wild card episode of Coding 101, we're back from DEF CON and we're bringing you all of the things. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is TWIT. Bandwidth for Coding 101 is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome to Coding 101. <laughs> it's the show where we let you into the wonderful world of the Code Monkey. I'm Father Robert Balliser. And I'm Shannon Morrison. For the next 30 minutes, we are going to get you all, well, not really coded no, up, no, but coded up. This we're, we're going to have some fun with projects and yeah. items from DEF CON. And DEF CON, that's right. Now, the wild card episodes fit between the modules. Now, yes. in the past, we've always done an interview, but we thought... We should probably, since this was Black Hat DEF CON week, show you some of the things that both of us geeked out over during our trip to Las Vegas. DEF CON for me is my favorite convention every single year, and I always try to come back with some kind of new knowledge. And since I've been doing Coding 101, I've been learning a lot more about software and the hardware side of things, especially when it comes down to all the different really cool challenges that they have at the convention. Yeah, and actually that's one of the things that I love about DEF CON. If, if you've never been to DEF CON, it's, it's a challenge-based conference. It's not one yes. of these places where you just go and you sit and you listen to talks. You can do that, but that would be a waste of your time because right. all of the talks from DEF CON can be found online afterwards. What's The really talks are fun. super awesome. They're, they're great talks. In fact, uh, actually, I wanted to see two of the talks, but the lines were so long. I'm like, no, I just... I'll watch I didn't it later. get to see any of them, so I interviewed them instead. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's the other way to do it. But uh, the, the nice thing about DEF CON, is, as you were talking about, are the competitions. There are so many different competitions that you can do. There's Capture the Flag. So if you want to be part of a team, it's, it's a computer-based network hacking competition where you try to defend your servers and attack other servers. Uh, there's things like the Crypto Challenge, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, things like <laughs> in the Hardware Hacking Village, there was the uh, the best bad uh, badge yes. modification that you can make. Uh, so you, you go down the line and there's all these little things that can attract people of any interest in the DEF CON. That's one of the things I like about the show. And the reason that we wanted to bring these up on Coding 101 is because a lot of these different coding challenges, they involve programming. Mm -hmm. And even those that aren't specifically about reprogramming something, it always helps to understand how code works because then you could start to imagine, well, they probably left an exploit here, or they probably <laughs> left a buffer I can overflow here. Or, even if you're not programming at all, if you understand how the mind of a programmer works, it really helps to, say, do one of the challenges. Like, they had one of my personal favorites. I don't have any video of it, but they had uh, a new one called What's in the Box. Oh, uh, yes. What's in the box? So awesome. It was in the Hardware Hacking Village, and the idea was they had a box within a box within a box, and you had to open up the third box. Now, most people are like, oh, okay, just open up the box. Open the box. But it's tamper evident. Yep. And so the rules were you couldn't destroy the box. You had to leave it in the same uh, condition mm -hmm. as when you found it. You couldn't set off any of the sensors. So they had like light sensors and movement sensors <laughs> and latch sensors. <laughs> and you had a time limit. It was a 10 minute time limit. So uh, you could watch the people who went before you. So there was the whole the accumulation of knowledge. Right. But it was amazing to see how people quickly learned to defeat the various sensors on each day. It, it was uh, actually, I really wanted to, to do that one. I didn't have time, <laughs> I did but too. next year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Some of the topics that we got from DEF CON were more suitable from our audience, for our audience, than others. The first one is SDR. What is SDR? Yay! So SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. And in particular, I've been really, really obsessed with this recently. Uh, I've delved it in from everything to learning how to plug a radio simply into your computer to listen to FM stations, to how to track airplanes on a map, on a graphical map on my machine, just from the data that is sucked in by this teeny tiny little antenna. And you can actually do those kind of things. Right. So software defined radio basically makes it very, very easy, even if you aren't a ham radio operator, to actually delve into a little bit more information about frequencies and wavelengths and how the patterns come into your computer and be accepted as as data as opposed to just radio frequencies. You can learn so much about like listening to truckers in your area, right. just very, very simple things. But you can also do things such as um, being able to 
not really unencrypt, but understand the data that is coming through GSM frequencies from cell mm -hmm. phones, which was something I recently did on Hack 5, a show that I do on revision3.com. So this is my new favorite thing. I'm super, super obsessed with it. These are about $20 online and very easy And to I use. got mine from a Hack Shop. Oh, oh did you? Yeah, I wonder where, where <laughs> I might be able to find the Hack Shop. Well, thank I'll you. find it in the show notes. Thank but, you. Uh, okay, so <laughs> one of the cool things about SDR, software-defined radio, is uh, as opposed to what we used to play with, where we had a, a radio... Big boxes. Yeah, huge boxes. Or you had to buy a different set for every s series of frequencies you wanted yep. to tap into. Today's SDRs are ridiculously inexpensive. Super, you know, super down to twenty six. bucks. Yeah. And you can you can adjust them in software yep. on the fly yes, as to which frequencies they're listening into. And the big one is if you've got a little bit of skill, you can you can actually take the encrypted yep. uh, uh, communications and use the power of your computer to unencrypt them. That's very, very true. Okay. So on my computer, for example, I'm not really unencrypting any crazy amounts because of Because we don't here. want to get arrested. Exactly. So we don't really show that kind of information on the show. But you'll so notice wait, what are we here looking that at right now? So I'm on WFM. It's kind of weird, but it's a wideband FM. So this is where you would usually pick up just simply radio stations. This is in a program that's free online called SDR Sharp. It's open source. There's a mm -hmm. bunch of different plugins you can use to work with it. And it works perfectly right out of the box with the USB that I have plugged in this radio. So I just click on R RTL SDR and I hit play. And then as soon as I do, I start picking up all sorts of interesting frequencies. So particularly, what am I listening to? Well, to find this specific frequency, I looked at <laughs> my my microphone that we're wearing for the show. So this microphone is picking up frequencies on 486.400. So when I plug this in and I go to 400, so mine is a little bit off on here and it's due to the fact that every single antenna is going to be a little bit different as far as its, um, its uh, what's it called? It's frequency correction, which you have to fix down here. So if right. I change this to zero, zero and hit enter, you see that it moves up just a yeah, little bit. Shifts. So it's a little bit off kilter. That happens with every single radio that you mess with. But if I turn up the audio, you can hear an echo. You're listening to yourself. I'm listening to myself. <laughs> So other things you can listen to on here, uh, if I wanted to, I could change it to CW and I could listen to, uh, you know, police encounters and emergency vehicles in the area. Right. I could go to NFM and I can listen to weather stations or buoys if I'm near a bay. You can listen to the beeps that are coming out of buoys. One of the things that uh, came out of some of the SDR panels is just the amazement people have. The first time they start playing with this, especially if they've got a wide frequency scanning SDR like this one, of how much RF there is in the world. Oh, it's nuts. It's, it's all around you. Everywhere, right. Everywhere. We Radi talk about Wi-Fi, we talk about our cell phones, but that's like tiny little amounts compared to what is out there. Mm, and so if you fun. have something like this, you can see that. You, you get a visual representation of where the spikes are, and then you can, you can home in on those spikes and figure out what's going on. Absolutely true. And I, I have another kind of cool little show and tell thing, if you, I can share this. Absolutely. So this is called the Blade RF, and it's by Newand. So this is like a bigger, more hardcore version of my little teeny tiny RTL SDR mm -hmm. that I plugged into my computer. I have not started messing with this yet because I just got it. I didn't fly home with it because it looks kind of scary. <laughs> so <laughs> I told my friend, hey, you drove to DEF CON, just, you know, bring this back for me. So he just got back. I'm super, super excited to check this out. Basically, it's a USB 3.0 super speed SDR, That's which ridiculous. means that you're going to pick up so much more data through this thing than you normally would be able to. I am really, really excited and, uh, to check this out. And this has one additional thing. Uh, if you go look at mm, the overhead, look at this uh, you know, here's the trans, Can you see? here's the, tra the receiving port. Yeah. And over here, Yep. There's a transmit port. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is for serious hacks. Yeah, wh whereas the SDR radio here, this little USB, it's 20 bucks, but it can only receive. Right. This monster could actually match a frequency and transmit. There's it's like a, $450, yeah, there's but a it can lot do both. Of, ooh, it's, <laughs> that's an amazing board. I'm so excited to play yeah. with it. Uh, what, what we want you to do is go ahead and pick one of these up. We don't think you're going to start programming right away, but what is really nice about these units is since they're all using open source software, mm -hmm. you can download the code and even if you're a novice, start poking around because you'll really quickly find the, uh, the, the code blocks that they left in place so that you can take the incoming transmissions and start running them through ciphers. It's, it, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's something that definitely... But it's so cool! Yeah, you will find the ah. coolest factor. You'll find it quickly. <laughs>
Needless to say, I'm going to get my ham radio license very soon. <laughs> I was going to get it this weekend, and everybody told me to, but I was stuck in my vendor booth the entire time I was at DEF CON, yeah, so I couldn't well, do it. Well, I mean, that was a good thing. We saw you there. You, you were, you were kind of awesome. Slightly busy. Yeah. So you have something cool to show us, too. Yeah, I got a couple of cool things. Uh, one of the, the things that I really enjoyed doing at DEF CON was playing with the, uh, the lock picks. Oh, and uh, so yes. what we've got is, this is from Tool. This is a set of lock picks from their, their opening... Uh, lock Those look set. familiar. Yeah, yeah. Tool, tools always at DEF CON. They're always uh, ready to teach. Now, the, the theory behind lock picking is really simple. Brian, if you go ahead and go to my computer, uh, this is what a lock looks like in a transparent case. Now, when you put the key in, these tumblers that you can see, these, these pins, they'll go up and down depending on the shape of the key. The idea is to, to match up the shear line on the pins with the shear line on the cylinder so that you can actually turn it. This is what it looks like when it's in motion. See how when I remove this key, you'll see the pins actually slide back down to where they are before the key is inserted into, uh, into the lock. See how those slide back down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what you want ultimately when you put that key back in, you'll see how all the pins line up. That's what you want because now it means that you're going to be able to turn the cylinder. Uh, come back over to the table. This is the basis of lock picking. The, Got the, it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stab it in there. This is this is the most simple one. Uh, and um, someone from playing before, oh, there we go. There's the torsion bar. You would just put this into your hand and you would put the, uh, oh, this is, you turned it already. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I okay. unlocked it. <laughs> uh, and you would put this into the lock, this torsion bar, and you would put a little bit of pressure. The idea is you want to you want to keep some tension so that as you poke the, the pin up, it'll stay up. And then you take the pick and you just lever yourself up so that you tap that pin. And once you tap the pin, you did it, it will open the lock. Yeah. Uh, this is a super easy one. There's only it's one pin one. in this. <laughs> but uh, you can go to like five, five pin, six pin, and then this, this nice little clear lock to practice your so groove. That is so pretty. I think the best that I've done is um, four pins so far. Yeah. I'm, I have trouble with five pins. They are so hard. I can do six pin, but six pin will either take me 20 seconds or it will take me four minutes. Right, yeah. Uh, and, and you know, it's very easy to get frustrated and start working. Like uh, One of the things, that I've, I brought this for Brian, and Brian's <laughs> been playing with it. And uh, uh, both of us get frustrated when you know, you, you're know you tensioning it, and then you let up the tension, and you hear the pins fall back in, and you're like, ah, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> no, so close. Gone. Unless you're Burke, and you bend the pins to your will. Yeah, or you could be Burke, who thought it would be cool to just crank on it with a screwdriver and bend the pins. Oh, no. It did open the lock, but now I got to replace it. <laughs> now, I know that a lot of people have questioned. I, I took a picture of these on Instagram because I got a, uh, I got some of these for my husband. Yes, yeah. And uh, somebody said, those are a felony in California. And I was like, ah, ah nope. it is different from state to state. So mm -hmm. make sure you understand your state's regulations or your country if you're overseas before you actually purchase these. Uh, in California in particular, you can have them. It's totally fine to own them as long as you don't have any kind of criminal intent. They have to prove in court that you had criminal intent for it to be a felony exactly, or a misdemeanor. Exactly, exactly. So, for example, uh, in, in, a, in a while, in a few weeks, we're actually going to show you on Know How exactly how you pick a lock. But I would say, and I'm, I'm going to say this during the episode, if you're doing this on a lock you don't own, you deserve to be in prison. <laughs> Disclaimer. And you will be. <laughs> we will turn you in. Oh, yeah. he will. Yeah, follow the law. It's, it's a learning tool. It's a, and again, this fits into the whole DEF CON philosophy of you need to know what's broken so you fix can it. fix it. Exactly. There, there, there is no benefit of ignorance. Mm -hmm. So everything that we're showing you, from the SDR to the lock picking to the little hacking we're going to do and some of the programming on embedded processors, it's all about showing you the world that you live in so that you can be a bit more secure. Don't be scared. Don't be oh, scared. Oh, I made it do a thing. Oh, that's okay. All right, <laughs> now let's talk a little bit. Uh, something that I really, really like, and actually this, this does get us into programming. This does get us oh, into coding. Yeah. And that is the DEF CON badges. <gasps> so every year they have a contest with the DEF CON badges. Mm -hmm. Who can make the thing do the thing? Yes, oh, well, there's, there's a couple of different contests. So there's the modding contest. So this, this is what a badge looks like uh, from DEF CON 22. And it's actually, that's not its, this is its most pristine version. Uh, so it's yes. just the circuitry. This is the lanyard that you would hang over your neck. But this is the, an embedded microcontroller. Mm -hmm. And what it used to do is, oh, this one 
Before you break it. Before I break it. <laughs> this one used to have a, a series of flashing lights that would go up and down, but more importantly, you could bring this within proximity of another badge. And they would talk to each other. And they would synchronize. Yes. Right, and they would sync. And the cool thing about the syncing is as it would sync, it would pass on a bit of information that you could use in the crypto challenge. Yep, I remember that. Yeah, now, now this is what we have from DEF CON 22. This is for this year. This one right here. This is the badge that we uh, that we just got at the conference last week. Now, uh, it just if you go and bring the lights down a little bit so we can see this a bit better, uh, this is a, a simple microcontroller that has some flashing lights. And as you touch these pads, the flashing lights start to do different things, Ooh. which is which is kind of cool, right? Exactly. So you could you could make it stop, you can make yeah, it uh, flash, cool. all these. All the cool things. So that's what you could do just by plugging batteries into the back of it. Right. And, and we showed this off in know-how, but uh, there was something else about this. The part of the DEF CON challenges is the crypto challenge. And the crypto challenge is all inclusive of the conference. They gave us the set of uh, red glasses at the very beginning. <laughs> and it was, it was one that people who came to the conference first were like, why am I getting these? Yes. People who had <laughs> been at the thought. conference before, they're like, oh, this has got to be part of the crypto challenge. And if you went down the hallways, you could see on certain signs, certain walls, uh, the text that would actually pop out of the background. Uh, like, for example, on this book, this is the uh, DEF CON program. And if you look through the pages, it looks totally normal under normal light. But if, as I look at this with, with the glasses, I can see uh, that there's uh, there's text that pop up on the on the top that was actually part of the crypto challenge. That's so cool. Yeah. So uh, and uh, it's it's a combination of of knowledge gathering and searching and programming that lets you solve it. Now let me show you one more part. I, I showed this off on uh, on Know How earlier this morning. Um, I got to shut this one Ooh, down. I'm excited. Uh, so this is for the badge. This is for the badge, right? Okay. So that connects me to the badge. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a program called. Oops. Uh, called Terra Terminal. There we go. Are you ready? And Brian, go ahead and jump over here. Oh, there we go. So I, what I want to do is I want to connect to the badge as it is, but it gives me this sort of just junk, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can't really do much with that. I can't do much, but but then I, if again, if I have someone on my team for this crypto challenge, I get to, uh, I get to, tap their knowledge. And their knowledge would be, oh, I've seen this before. This is the kind of gibberish you would get if you were using an old school terminal oh. and you had the wrong terminal settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the settings to, to something that I know will actually work. I'm going to drop into the terminal. I'm going to change it from CR to CR and LF. That's carriage return and line feed. I'm going to turn on the local echo. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the, the, the speed. When I change the speed on the serial port, it should start to communicate properly like so. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. Right. And uh, as again, as we explained on um, Know How this morning, these are actually oh, wow. the, like the bits of text that you would see in the old Carpenter movie, They Live. <laughs> this was the subliminal advertising that the aliens put into signs that's and televisions. Awesome. And, 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 you know, it was the theme of the show. The theme of the show was, look, question authority, question yeah. reality. Yep. But th that's not it. You also get this. Go ahead and go back to the window. If I touch the pads, no, the, the oh, sorry, the, the desk. If I touch the pads here and now go back to my computer, I can make those messages change <gasps> to hints. Oh. And these were the hints for solving number, the crypto challenge. Name, then the second half of right. number. Oh. And this would actually give you if, you, if you did this correctly, it would give you a hint to find the URL that would lead find you to the next, the next part of the crypto challenge. That's cool. Okay. Uh, very cool, but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> what we're here to talk about is how we actually reprogram this. Let me show you what this looks like, uh, Propeller, when I look at the source code. So this is a Propeller embedded chip from Parallax. Uh, now, the source code for this was included in the DEF CON CD. Uh, let me go ahead and open that up. Um, and everybody got a CD when they have checked in. Right. Everyone so you automatically got, get the CD. Everyone got a CD, so everyone had it. And this is what the code looks like for oh. a human. Right. Oh, so cool. this is what gets pushed into the badge. Every badge had this code. Now, I, just looking through this, again, this is why it's so important to comment. It's super, super simplified. This is not yeah. like C Sharp or Python or Perl. 
Uh, this, this is speaking directly to the embedded processor. So you have to understand the language wow. of the processor in order to make it work. However, there are a few things that are really easy to change. Like, for example, this. This is all the code that, a lot, that determines what the, uh, the lights do when you touch the pads. Cylon. <laughs> right. So this is the Cylon. This, this tells me that when I, uh, uh, when I touch pad 2 plus 1, it's going to do... Hold on, let me see if I can get the right combination. Uh, the, do you need the, little fingers? Yeah, little fingers, please. These two? No, I want it the, the one going back and forth. Oh, uh, let me do this. There we go. Go ahead and ah. no, so drop the lights a little bit. This is the Cylon code. It just makes this light go back and forth, back and forth, right? That's cool. Okay. Now okay. go back and go, go to my code window, and you'll see it's just a, it's almost like ask, writing ASCII. It's just got this 1001, zero, zero, one, oh, yeah. right? So okay. I, you can see the active bit going back and so forth. So it's kind of like the one is the one that's being lit up. Right, and everything oh. else is dark. And right here, I've got the delay. So how fast is this going to go? And that is in milliseconds? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and I can go from 0 to 255. Now, here's the cool thing. I could, for example, here's a little something, something, a little code snippet I wrote before. Take this, drop this in here. Oh, like you can so. change it. Yeah, I, I can oh. reprogram the embedded processor, like so. And now, <laughs> the, it's, it's, it's much stronger, but I, now what I've done is I've made it so that it's three lights that are lit up and they go yeah. all the way off the screen. And all I have to do is this, run, compile, and then I'm going to load it to the EEPROM the e -E -prom of, the, uh, of the badge. Okay. Okay, and that's going to stop. Oh, see I how can it goes? see it's okay. loading. Yeah. And as soon as it's done, I can go ahead and let's re-trigger that event. Where, where, there, there it goes. Go. Oh, that's so cool. See? So it's three dots now. It's going to go all the way to one side and off. It's going to oh wait gosh. and then come back. That's awesome. And this is just an embedded controller. This is, this is coding. This is programming. But it's a different kind of programming because it's, it's, it's very, very thin. There's not, there's not a big compiler over the top of it. I'm not trying to make this interface with anything else. I'm just trying to control the devices that are attached to this microcontroller. That's very similar to something that I picked up this weekend. Well, let's tell me about it. Bam. So this is a bracelet that I got from the DC801 Club. So it's a group of guys who go to DEF CON and they create really cool different hacks. So I haven't gotten to play with this one too much either quite yet, but it's the same exact thing. It's programming inside of hardware. So they have a chip inside of here underneath and then on top they have this screen and what they do is they reset it with the little reset button over here and then you can program each of these buttons to do something different and you simply plug it in and then it runs yeah. so for this one for this example uh, when I first received it it just says dark matter so that's the name of one of the DC 801 uh, people that created this cool little hack and he simply plugs it in with a lithium-ion battery right here writes the code for whatever he wants the screen to say, and then he can program each of the buttons. That's, that's very cool. And again, very that's cool. an embedded device. Another thing I didn't bring on the plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, one of the things that, uh, that uh, Dark Tangent, he's the, the creator of, De of DEF CON, and he, he gives a big keynote every year, is he started talking about the simplicity of how we live our electronic lives. He, he said, like, we're not going Amish. We're not going to remove all the electronics <laughs> we've got. But we have to start considering why we do things in a grandiose way if we yes. could do it much more simply. Instead of an Ethernet hub for connecting to computers, why couldn't you run a direct cable if that's all that you need? Right. Uh, you know, instead of designing a huge cloud API, if you really just want to store something, there's a much better way to securely make sure that no one else can get a ha their hands on it. And one of the big parts of that was, look, let's start looking at embedded devices. Yes. Embedded devices are so much harder to hack, uh, especially since we know the code that goes into it. Why are we not using more of those? <sighs> I like that. He's uh, we, a brilliant man. He is a brilliant man. If you go ahead and run the uh, the B roll that we had from uh, from DefCon, I also talked to Smitty. <gasps> Smitty. And Smitty is going to come on Coding 101 at some point, awesome. and he's going to teach us about embedded programming. This was an embedded device that he created for DefCon uh, for what he called the darknet. Now, have you ever read Daniel oh, Suarez's goodness. Demon and Freedom? This is Ooh, the same idea. Yes. Uh, so it's like a ma It's a, an MMORPG, except instead of collecting items, you collect knowledge. And one of the bits of knowledge that you would collect is how to, how to do this. You had to solder your kit together. 
Uh, and and mm -hmm. once you got this kit, you started to do what are called dark net challenges. Ooh, he's got a nice soldering gun. Oh, he's got oh, it's a very <laughs> good soldering iron. Uh, and then the kit would look something like this, and eventually it would allow you to sync with other kits. So, for example, if you had an instructor at the lock picking village, you could bring your badge to him or her once you're done learning how to pick locks, and they would synchronize their badges just like this. No way. And now your badge contains that extra bit of achievement. And at the end of the conference, you could go back to the uh, dark net and say, this is, these are all the challenges that oh I did. Oh my gosh, it's like, it's like being in Skyrim and learning how to lock pick there. Yeah, it, You well, get achievements, you, achievement unlocked. You get achievements and it's you're collecting knowledge, which that is again, so cool. what is DEF CON is all about. Knowledge. Uh, and, and we're gonna have Smitty on the show at some point in the near future, we just have to make the schedules match, but he said he will do an entire module for us on programming embedded <gasps> devices. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Christmas. It is Woo! like Christmas. <laughs> now, that's that's pretty much a wrap-up of what we did at DEF CON. I know you you spent a lot of time in your booth. I spent a lot of I time. I spent tons of time in filming. My booth. Right. Oh, my gosh. That's all I did. <laughs> but it's a crazy, wonderful place to go if you ever want to learn about pretty much anything. I mean, we cover, think about what we just covered. Yep. Software-defined radio. Just a few of the things we Lock did. picking. I was able to talk to Medical a girl community. who figured out that through a certain RF frequency, you can basically make your hair dryer's power brick melt. I saw melt. that. I saw that. That's Completely awesome. melt. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> the sympathetic, you can trigger a sympathetic resonance yes. inside the hair dryer that would cause it to melt itself. Ah, and the war kitty. That was funny. We are going to have hacks. hacks. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, that's it for this episode of Coding 101. Next week, we start with another module. And guess what? What is it? We're ringing back an old favorite. <gasps> we had yes. a bunch of fans who were saying, okay, you know, 101 is cool, but we'd like to see something a bit more. We've had three modules now where we learn all the basics, the, the loops and the if-then statements and, and how to deal with memory. So we're going to go back to C Sharp. What? And we're bringing Lou Maresca back on. Yay! He's going to give us coding 102 oh, so that you can take your C snap. Sharp and actually do something a bit more interesting. <gasps> oh, snap. I am ready. I can't wait. I'm this is what we excited. do. We listen to you, and you told us, hey, this is good, but give us a little something something that we can use to move past something, something. that 101 level. Ooh. So oh, we're going to have lots there we of go. fun. That's right. We've, <laughs> we have now undeaded Lou. Undeaded. He's totally not dead. <laughs> and uh, we're bringing him back for Coding 101 I starting so next week. I am so excited for this. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yay. Uh, until that time, uh, you know, drop by our show notes at our, our, uh, our site at twit.tv. I'm not sure why we're Sorry. continuing to wave the American flag. <laughs> at twit.tv slash C101, that's coding 101, and you'll be able to find the notes. We're actually gonna give you the notes from this episode, so you can go to the various places. We'll give you a link to a place where you can buy a software-defined radio. We'll give you links so you could get one of, uh, uh, <laughs> one of Snub's super ridiculous radios. <laughs> and I'll even give you the link to how we solved the DEF CON crypto Yay! challenge. Yeah. So yeah. fun. So fun. And of course, we're on iTunes. Search for Coding 101 in audio and video. And we're also, we have RSS feeds and we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash twit coding 101. And don't forget to check out our Google Plus community. There's a lot of people in there and they're very, very smart and they're willing to help. Uh, unfortunately, our, our shortener no longer works, but uh, make sure to go to plus.google.com slash twit coding 101 and uh, you'll be able to ask your questions. You'll be able to send us your coding examples once we start the module. And you'll be able to ask questions to Snub about, like, for example, how do I get that awful cool SDR and <laughs> how do I start off? I will be happy to help you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you're not into the G Plus groove, why not join us on Twitter? You can the find Twitters. the Twitters. You can find me at twitter.com slash Padre SJ. That's at Padre SJ. And I'm at, at, at. Snubs. At snubs. At snubs. And uh, snubs. don't forget that we do this show live every week, Thursdays uh -uh. at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. You can find us at live.twit.tv. And as long as you're watching live, jump into our live chat room yes. at irc.twit.tv and uh, talk Let's back to us. hello to us. Hello. I like smart folks, too. Thanks, BQ. Fantastic. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Shannon Morse. End of line. <laughs> <laughs>